Hi, this is Peter Taiti and Manos Brilakis from the Minneapolis Heart Institute and the Cardiovascular Innovations Foundation, presenting case 35 for the Manual of Non-CTO Coronary Interventions. This is a case of a large RCA thrombus. The patient presented with an acute inferior STEMI and was found to have a large thrombus in the mid-distal RCA. He did have a improvement in symptoms when he arrived to Kathla, but he still had some ongoing chest discomfort. We were able to wire the right coronary artery using radial access and an Amplage 1 guide catheter, wired it, and then did intravascular ultrasound. Intravascular ultrasound showed no significant calcification in the vessel, but there was a large filling defect, probably plaque and or thrombus in the mid and proximal right coronary artery. Given the patient's ongoing symptoms, we decided to attempt thrombectomy. We initially used an export aspiration catheter, but this was unsuccessful. We then used a guide catheter extension in an attempt to aspirate the thrombus, but once again, this was unsuccessful. We even inserted a filter wire distal to the thrombus and then deployed it and then pulled it back into the guide catheter extension in an attempt to capture the thrombus, but unfortunately that failed as well. And also during all those attempts, what happened is uh, distal movement of the thrombus resulting in compromise of the distal flow. As a last resort, we tried to use um, a laser to create a channel through the thrombus, which was unsuccessful, and moreover, the patient did have uh, severe ST changes, both ST segment depression as well as this ST segment elevation, and then developed uh, a ventricular fibrillation multiple times, requiring defibrillation as well as intubation. He did uh, have hypotension afterwards, likely due to RV infarction. He received uh, multiple doses of epinephrine, which after administration resulted in actual hypertension, but then the patient would slowly drift down again and then would require additional epinephrine to the point that uh, after consulting with advanced heart failure, we called for a PROTECH duo right ventricular assist device. In the meantime, however, we did start the patient on an epinephrine drip, and there is uh, some uh, data that epinephrine may be favorable for supporting the right ventricle. And after starting the drip, the patient hemodynamics actually stabilized, even though he continued to have some ST segment changes, but he was able to be dismissed to the uh, intensive care unit and uh, the following day, his hemodynamics had improved. How to manage a large coronary thrombus? The first op goal is to restore coronary flow. If um, there is undergrade flow, as was the case in this patient, then the question is whether the patient has a large thrombus. There was a large thrombus in this case. If it's a small thrombus, then balloon and stent is the way to go. But if there is large thrombus, if there is no significant ongoing ischemia, one option which we could have done and retrospectively should have done in this case, is administering strong antithrombotic management, usually with a glycoprotein to B3 inhibitor and heparin, and then repeating angiography in two to three days. This intensive antithrombotic management might actually lead to resolution of the thrombus, and then PCI will be much, much safer. But occasionally, if the patient continues to have ongoing ischemia, then attempts to remove the thrombus are done, either with thrombectomy or with laser, but this does carry the risk of embolization and artery infarction, as was the case in our patient. In summary, large thrombus does carry high risk for complications. There is the possibility of uh, embolization during thrombus aspiration attempts that is going that can lead to right ventricular infarction. And therefore, in such cases of uh, massive thrombus, if there is uh, preserved undergrade flow and no significant pace and symptoms, one option is uh, a conservative management with administration of glycoprotein to B3 inhibitors as well as heparin and repeated geography in two to three days to allow resolution of the thrombus. Finally, if despite that there is distal embolization and in the right coronary artery, right ventricular infarction, epinephrine may be very useful for supporting the right ventricle, but occasionally 
right ventricular support devices like the Impella RP or the Protect Duo may be required. Thank you.